Greetings Space Marines, Fayot here and today I'm bringing you a build for the tactical, one focusing on optimizing all specs in order to make it as harmful to the enemy as possible by upping the damage of the entire squad. You can go utility with it, you can go damage and you can go hybrid but this time what we want to do is empower the entire team to deal as much hurt as possible to the enemies. I will be breaking down the entire perk tree and then I will take a look at the guns to explain to you why I pick the things I pick. Without further ado, let's get to it. So the perk tree is reset and I will be picking every single one of them as I explain why I'm picking them. We have three choices here, balance distribution, 10% more for the primary and 10% less for the secondary when it comes to damage. Plasma boost, when the plasma incinerator is 50% overheated, the damage increased by 30%, this is great. And crack and penetrate around, bolt weapons penetrate one more enemy. If you're gonna play with the incinerator, this is awesome. But as you probably saw in the thumbnail, we're not gonna play with the incinerator. Generator. We're gonna play with a bolt gun. So we're gonna pick Kraken Penetrator Rounds. Second one is Heightened Vigor. After perfectly dodging, you cannot lose control from heavy hits. Relentless Pursuit. After a gun strike, range damage increased by 25%. And versatility, after switching weapons, your secondary weapon does 20% more damage until you either swap back or reload it. Versatility is great if the class can use the plasma pistol, but the tactical can't. So having this here makes no damn sense. I don't like it. Here, after a gun strike, range damage increases by 25%. If you know how to proc gun strikes on demand, secret for you guys, you can do this by charging the first attack in your combo string on small enemies. If it doesn't kill them outright, it will always knock them prone and you can execute a gun strike. It will give you 25% extra damage for 5 seconds. You swap to your primary and melt whatever is in front of you. Super powerful, we're picking this. Final shot. After a finisher, the equipped ranged weapon reloads automatically. Very good. Steady aim, 10% recall reduction and Emperor's Vengeance. Killing a Majoris level or higher enemy restores your primary weapon's ammo by one mag and can proc once every 30 seconds. So the difference with this is that this will proc on any finisher. This will have to be a Majoris, let's say one of the Hunters and everything above that, but will give you a mag that also goes into your active bullet count. So it reloads you and gives you a shitload of ammo. This is fantastic. We're picking this 100%. And the fourth, we have the communion of fire. Recall is reduced by 20% for everyone. Aligned aim range damage increases by 5% for all squad members and transhumer physiology. All squad members restore 30% more contested health. Unless everyone in your team is using melee based builds, you should go with aligned aim. Plus 5% for all squad members equals 15% in a clear line of fire where everyone is focusing their aim and of course the overall damage count will go through the roof. We're picking this 100%. On the fifth, vital data. Scanning an extremist or terminus level enemy restores all spec scan by 50%. These are, let's say, the raveners and then we go to the boss level enemies, the mini bosses. Priority targeting. The mark from all spec lasts 8 seconds longer than 16 seconds but it does not mark the minorities and target lock and Enemies marked by your specs can take 25% more equipment damage, that is grenades and those juicy melter bombs that will melt bosses. I say you go for target locked, but this is not as adamant as the rest of my choices. Also, you can go for extended duration or for extended cooldowns, but this is very, very niche. For overall utility and taking down the real chunkers, target lock is pretty great. 6. Battle focus. A perfectly timed party gives the party the enemy a mark from Auspex scan. Improved efficiency, scanning 20 enemies with one Auspex scan restores one equipment charge, that is one grenade or bomb. Precise calibration, enemies marked by Auspex scan take an additional 75% damage, but Auspex scan's radius is reduced by 25%. Absolutely take this one for the purposes of this build, because improved efficiency is also fantastic, but we're going for damage as we discussed, so precise calibration it is. 
7. Close targeting. When Auspex scan is in cooldown, melee damage increases by 50% and get minority enemies. Expert timing. Enemies barked by Auspex scan take an additional 100% damage, but the mark's duration is reduced by 4 seconds. Enemies marked by Auspex scan take an additional 100% damage, but they lose the mark when they leave the scanned area. Now, listen here. When you're fighting in a really hectic scenario, you don't have time to just sit there and line them up. Everyone who played difficulty settings 3 and 4 or know that you hit the enemy when you can, you focus fire, you melt them, and you run, dodge, and finish them when you are able to. For me, the best idea here is to go for expert timing or concentrated fire. Concentrated fire is better when you want the time to really dish out damage. Let's say you fight the Drake in operations. It's a stationary target. When you light it up, it can't go anywhere. It will just sit there and get obliterated. But not every target is the same. This will reduce the duration, but even if the enemy moves, they can still be melted by your auspex. This is my choice, my number one choice for this build, but it doesn't really go without question. You can leave your comment in the comment section below explaining to me and the other peeps why you prefer this or that, and I'll take everything under consideration. Final column, signal jammer. Enemies marked by auspex cannot summon reinforcements. Radiating impact, a melee finisher additionally deals significant area of effect damage. 90 seconds cooldown, marked for death, a headshot will instantly kill a majority or extremist level enemy marked by Auspex scan. Cooldown is 120 seconds. No questions asked. We're going for this. This is insane. It says it has a cooldown of 120 seconds, but that is not as long as you would think when you analyze in your brain what it actually means to be able to instagive an enemy when they are in Auspex. You don't have to take a shot at the smallest of shites when you Auspex them. You will take a shot at the big guy and take him out of the equation right away amazingly powerful tool that will 100 assist you into thinning the herds of tougher enemies because let's face it if you have good line of sights and good communication with your allies the small fries will not pose as big of a threat as to a team that is just running and gunning with reckless abandon now you can see my weapons on the left i am going with heavy bolt rifle bolt pistol is our only choice and chainsaw of course is our only choice but for our main my choice is bottom right Relic of Filian Liberation Beta. It is amazing. It gives you firepower, accuracy, magazine capacity, and ammo reserves. And compared to the rest, I would say it is the most balanced. If you're gonna go raw stats, top left is the best. But then again, you lose 10 bullets from your mag and 40 when it comes to your overall carrying capacity. So bottom right it is. For the perk tree, I am a little mixed and I'm gonna explain what I mean. Generally, I don't like these perk trees in Space Marine 2. They force you to use useless shit to occasionally reach something that will help you overall. What I do here is go top row, as you can see, and then on the very last configuration, I pick perpetual penetration for additional penetration that brings the penetrated targets to two, working in tandem with, of course, the entirety of the build, extended mag and chaos eliminator, or you can go for tyranid eliminator if you're gonna fight tyranids. Another issue that comes from this whole system is that you have to reset the whole thing and put back all the perks so you can pick something that is slightly different if you wanna change something up there. You really have to make them nodes, activate, deactivate with the clean of the button and everyone will be much happier. For our pistol, I go top left relic, the Gathalamor Crusade. Pretty self-explanatory why. Very good firepower, very good accuracy. If I swap this, I lose a lot of accuracy and I want to be able to take shots at longer distances. For the perk tree, it's straight down the bottom line to get the 10% additional damage at the very end. We have exactly the amount of nodes needed to get here with the masteries. For our chainsaw, I go top right relic. Relic, the Quillen Dedication. It is the best when it comes to powering because it provides fencing, one of the best perks for a weapon in the game. And for the perk tree, I go all the way bottom line up to Master Crafted, then one up the whole top line, as you can see here, with the exception of also getting Tyranid Slayer because I want the extra damage for the Tyranids as well. So, this is it, Space Marines, my very first tactical build. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a look at this one one for the heavy i will be bringing you more so subscribe like and hit the notification bell and until next time be well stay frosty and always travel perfection cheers